Hello, this is uh, the second part on effect racks. In the last part, we put this little uh, wave into a track and dropped an insert into the track and then applied some macros to it. In this video, um, let's start fresh. Let's go ahead and delete this rack um, and this sample. Let's find something new here. So I'm gonna go into the samples folder and just kinda look for something that might be fun. Okay, why not make this one more beat driven? Let's drop one of these little uh, drum loops in here. Okay, that's a fun little loop. What should we insert? Let's uh, let's maybe start with a, um, let's try this phaser flanger. Okay, so I have inserted the phaser flanger effect into this track. With it selected, I'm going to hit Apple G and now it is grouped into its own rack. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and assign macros to the different parameters. But for this example, I'm, I'm not going to do that just yet. So let's just mess around here and find something that is obviously adding some effects to our track. It's a little low heavy. I'm gonna bring in an EQ8. I'm gonna put it before our rack. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out some of these subs, the, the sub um, bass. Okay. Now I double clicked on that just to close it up. Alright, so this is the track with the phaser. Right on. So, I'm going to close this uh, macro view. I'm going to open the chain view. So what this is showing us is uh, some controls here that will affect the following chain of effects. Right now our chain is only one phaser. But let's drop let's drop something else in there. Let's put a um, something tonal in there. Put a, how about a corpus? Okay, I'm gonna drop I drop this corpus into the rack. So let me find a setting here that might be kind of fun. So now we've got a chain. It's got the flanger and corpus going on. We could, if we wanted to, rename this by hitting Apple R, like you do with any other element um, that you can rename in Ableton. Let's uh, call this one um, beam. Beam flange one. So this gives us some controls for the full chain here. Um, we could, let's play, just turn the whole thing down. We could pan it left and right, and mute it, we could solo it, but what's the point of that if you don't have something else playing? So this is where the cool part comes in. I've got the chain selected, I'm going to hit Apple D, and now we've got an, another unique chain. Now this is a chain that we can put um, different settings or different inserts into and it will be completely discrete from the first one so I'm gonna click this mute button on the first one so we're only hearing this chain I'm gonna Apple R I'm gonna call it number two and just mess around with some settings here we go All right, so that's kind of fun. It puts a little bit of shuffle and a bit of a brighter beam sound on it. Let's turn the first beam flange back on. Now we've got two different effect chains playing at the same time. Now with these controls, you can pan one effect chain over to the left and be extreme with it. The other effect chain over to the right and be extreme with it. Right, so now if you mute one, you can tell that the other one's on the left, that one's on the right. They're both doing their own thing. Here's another powerful thing that you can do with chains. Let's make a duplicate. So let's call this one dry. So we'll always have a dry signal. Let's delete these inserts. So now we've got a chain with nothing, nothing in it at all. So if we solo this one and put it back in the middle, this is just our, our dry track. Now it's still being affected by this EQ8 that is outside of the rack. These will only control the effect chain within this rack. So let me close this back up. 
So now we can have this dry signal always in the center. Beam flange one on the left. Let's turn it down a little. And the other beam flange two on the right. So now let me show you another really cool feature um, with these stacked chains. Um, bear with me, I'm going to tweak some different effects here. Okay, so what I've done here is I've used this corpus to create a tonal overtone that corresponds to a particular note. So in this uh, chain, the note here is an F3. The next uh, chain is a D sharp three. Next chain, if I solo it, C, uh, G two, and then an F two. Now, if I um, turn all of these on at the same time, It, you know, it's neat, but it's a, it's a mess. So I'm gonna click this button here that says chain, and it opens up yet another window within your rack controls. This here gives you this little selector cursor that you can move around, and I'll show you why you can move that around. These little blue lines show you the active area within this full like channel track that will be live when the cursor is over it. So right now they're all pretty thin and they're kind of hard to see. So let's drag, let's drag these guys out. So you can drag the ends out and the beginnings. And right now this might not make any sense at all. And it took me a while to kind of figure out what in the heck was going on. I'm just kind of doing this willy nilly uh, without any rhyme or reason. I am going to do that. Okay, so now if I were to play this loop again, we're not seeing a playhead go across this. This isn't a um, sequence or anything, but we can grab and drag this little cursor around. And now you can see wherever I've dragged this cursor to, it's going to be playing the chain that corresponds with the little blue section. All right, so it's, again, you know, doesn't really tell you what you can do with this yet, but here I am going to select all of these that are not the dry one. I'm going to select these. I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to say distribute ranges equally. So now they all have an equal uh, amount of space across this little area. I'm going to go ahead and uh, br um, drag the dry chain across the full spectrum. So I'm manually clicking and dragging this thing around. But what do we have within an effect rack? Macros. So this little cursor, this little um, uh, chain selector here can be mapped. So let's click on the map button. You remember this from the last video. I'm going to click on the chain selector cursor and map it to macro one. I'm going to just map that for now. So you can see now when I turn macro one, it's going, it's going around. Cool. So this could now, this little macro could be um, mapped to your MIDI controller. So if you have something like Where's my camera? <laughs> so if you have uh, like one of these guys, you just map this chain selector to, to one of your MIDI controls and you've got a way of controlling channels live. Here's a little extra credit fun thing that you can do. I'm going to drop an LFO into our chain here. Now an LFO is not an effect. It's not going to do anything until, just like with macros, until you map it to an element. So I'm going to map this LFO to this chain selector. Look at what it's doing. This puppy is now going crazy. Now LFOs can have their own tutorial, 
but um, just for instance, uh, quick and dirty, I can click on um, the right to be um, synced to a beat. So that's kind of cool already. Instead of being a nice uh, sine wave, I can say, hey, change this to a square wave. I can change the depth so it doesn't go as far across the available spectrum of your chain selector. You can also say, hey, make this a random selection. If you had more chains, this would have a lot uh, more options to select as it's going across, but I'm going to make the depth all the way down and speed it up. You can smooth the random um, wave. This hopefully gives you just a, a rough idea of some of the awesome, um, powerful features that are available once you start digging into racks. Before we go, uh, show you one helpful trick um, to use one of these chain selectors for. So some third party plugins will not have a wet, dry knob, which can be pretty annoying because Sometimes you want to blend the effect in and you say you don't want to use a send to send it. You want it on the effect chain for whatever reason. There are reasons to have it on the chain. Well, this is where putting a, an effect into a group rack is helpful. So I have this vocoder. And it's just, it's taking the low ends out. It's giving you a bit of that cool noise to the drum set. Um, but let's pretend like this dry wet knob doesn't exist. I'm going to go ahead and hit Apple G. So now it's grouped into a rack. I'm going to open up my chain. I'm going to call this chain dry and then this chain wet. And that's all we're going to do with this chain. It's not going to be anything crazier than this. So again, I'm going to click on this little chain button here and it opens up this track where you can select your channels. I'm going to drag each of these out. So now wherever this selector is, it's going to sound exactly the same, right? So on the dry channel, I'm going to delete the vocoder. Wet channel, vocoder is going on, doing its thing. Um, now it doesn't matter where we have the chain selector, it's going to sound exactly the same. But another thing, another feature that these selector rows have, if you grab, and this is kind of tricky to see, but if you hover in front of these little blue bars, you get a, a little bracket. Your cursor turns into a bracket. You can click and drag. And I'm going to do this from the, from the back. You can drag a little fade in and fade out. When the chain selector is here on the left, we're getting the full dry signal. As it gets further to the right, the volume of the dry signal drops out. So let's do a fade in with the wet signal. So now this little selector will, in effect, be a dry wet selector. Here, I'll, I'll give an example. Right now we're only hearing the dry signal. And now we're only hearing the wet signal. So that's a cool way to get around um, any effects that maybe don't have this dry wet option. And like we did earlier, we can open up the little macro window. We can map the position of this chain selector to one of the macros. So I'm gonna click this map button, click on the chain selector and map it to macro one. So undo map, chain selector, I'm gonna hit Apple R and call this one wet slash dry. Got all these macros here. It feels a little full, right? Let's hit this delete button, delete some of these other macros. Bam, now you got one. Look at that. Look at how cool that is. It's kind of boring gray, right? Let's make it a big red, wet, dry button. You know what? Let's go ahead and close up this chain view, hide. And let's go ahead and close the stack, the chain stack, hide you. And now we've just got this wet, dry button. Cool stuff. Again, tip of the iceberg. This is this is uh, some 101 level stuff. 
you can go crazy with these effects. Um, just don't let them stop you from actually making music. That's one thing about digging into all these effect parameters is you can quickly find yourself hours into a session um, and having nothing worth saving. Um, but what is worth saving are racks that you like um, and you feel like you might use for other sessions. So remember, if you do something that you like, hit the save button. Let's call this bad boy um, vocoder um, something. Vocoder something. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know what to call this. It doesn't <laughs> really do much at all. But save it. Um, put it in your effect chain favorites. Um, and there, you, 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 you haven't just wasted you know, an hour of your time. You've now got this effect um, rack that you can apply to anything. So there you go. Hopefully that was uh, helpful and um, you can use it in your own work. I will see you in the next video.